and we here. Welcome to the Hurt Business Podcast. I'm CP, and uh, of course we got JB. We're gonna touch on uh, the Malinaji firing, Garcia Campbell, Spence Garcia, Teofimo Lopez, Lomachenko, along with a multitude of other current topics around the boxing and MMA world. JB, how you feeling, baby? Man, I'm Gucci, man. I'm Gucci, man. Just happy to be back one more time. You heard? No doubt about it, man. So, uh, last time we were on, man, we didn't, it was something going on that we missed. Paulie Malignaggi, man. The guy uh, mm. got canned. He got canned from Showtime. Um, yeah. It's a lot of it's a lot of different opinions on that, bro. Like uh, I see a lot of people saying, "Man, it wasn't racist." What he said. Now the part that they're discussing, I don't have a problem with. He was simply saying, uh, talking about the different eras in boxing. Different people ran different um different eras. Of course, early on in boxing, uh, the Italian Americans kind of ran it. You know, the mob runs boxing, and plus, it wasn't that many brothers even allowed to fight. He gave yeah. us the 70s, 80s, and 90s. And now he says today, uh, the Eastern European is the dominant species in boxing was the wording that he used. Um, that statement alone, I have no problem with. What about you? Nah, um, I feel like it, it's, it's true to a degree, but I think a lot of it, man, it's a handful of the Eastern European fighters out right now that's really making noise this ain't no domination it's nothing like that going on but you know you got b-ball handling business at light heavyweight you got what triple g he was handling his business at middleweight uh you got lomachenko he was doing his thing at what 130 135 or whatever but for him to just say oh man it's an eastern european domination going on and all this other shit no they ain't true man and he and to be honest with you pal is just doing what he normally do man talking out his ass you know what i'm saying well you know yeah 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 now when he says domination that some of the most talented fighters in the sport are eastern european you know i agree I, with that but anyway i mean even if he's wrong i don't have a problem with his opinion on that no i don't Paulie I don't. lost me Paulie lost me with this right here jb and i quote i don't believe there is any racial oppression in 2020 I believe it is all made up and I believe it is exaggerated. Hmm. Now, that statement that he made after he was talking about uh, the domination of Eastern Europeans is what Pauli Malignaggi totally lost me. It's a totally yeah. insensitive and ignorant statement to make, especially with what we've been seeing in this country transpire over the last couple of months. I mean, the... Uh... The racial, the racial injustice, oh, fuck. the racial equality movement is a real movement, bro. I mean, you can, for him to say that, I can, and I don't want to put this tag on him, but, but I just have to right now. The statements that he made came from somebody who I feel as though is far removed with what the fuck is really going on out here. And that's just the facts, right? And I feel like he was speaking from that place I don't think he was speaking from a place of, oh, you know, I came from a rough neighborhood or I came from a background that we all know he, he you know, he supposedly came from this background where, you know, he, where yeah, most fighters come from. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm looking at it from that point of view, but I don't think that part of him was talking. I think that part of him being a millionaire, being far removed from that situation for many years, I think he was speaking from that place. But at the same time, too, I think that he should be a little bit more responsible with his words because everybody know Polly. Polly really, he do have a, a voice in this sport. You know what I'm saying? And he have a big voice in this sport. And for the most part, he's been the most knowledgeable commentator, one of the most knowledgeable commentators, man, that we had in the sport in a long time. I just think that he was just real off base with his social commentary. And I think that goes along with a lot of fighters. Uh, that's not just him. He missed though. the mark. He just... Yeah. He Plain and simple, he totally missed the mark with this one, man. And it ruffled, it rubbed me the wrong way. You know what I'm saying? Even though yeah. I don't look at Paulie Malignaggi as a racist, but then now once no. you, you hear this, 
And then you kind of see how he moves on social media. I think somebody pointed out he liked the post about a kind of a, a, a racially insensitive post about somebody talking about blacks and working. Uh, you know, mm. he kind of is, maybe he's showing his true colors here. You know what I'm saying? That They say when somebody shows you who they are, believe them. And I was hoping Pauli Malignaggi is not showing us who he is right now. Hopefully this is some kind of uh, slip up or he's just so really misinformed. But I don't think you can make a statement that there's you don't believe there's any racial oppression in 2020. And that's mm -mm. his opinion, bro. He he's he entitled, he, that, he entitled okay. he's entitled to his opinion just like anybody else. But I just think from the point like the from the you know, come from the stance he was coming from. I think he was speaking from an uh, entitled place instead of speaking from the place I'm where I'm entitled he, to tell him he is totally off base and he's pretty ignorant. You yeah, know, I mean, if he thinks and I, that. And, and Showtime, it, Showtime told him the same thing, basically. They did what they were supposed to do, man, but I met him they a few times. They gave that man so. the golden shoe. They man, gave him I, the boot. And what's so crazy is I met him a few times, too. I think he a cool cat. And I'm, I'm talking like I done interviewed him a few times. I done talked to him, asked for pictures. You know, I done met him even when I, before I even got real involved with the sport of boxing, right? And he seemed like approachable. He seemed cool or whatever. Mm -hmm. But that just goes to show you sometimes, you know, people can put on a face and you just never know who they really are until they open their mouth, you heard me? So I think, I think this is just one of them situations, man. He overstepped and shit. I want to see what kind of move and I want to see what's going to happen after this. Since Showtime canned him, who going to pick him up, you know? I don't really well, think you know what? Hey, say that be man. Best of luck to him. I don't really care if he surfaces again. Whatever. He refused to apologize. Fuck it. Hey, I, now I'm gonna nah, go ahead. Nah. No, 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 bro. I know because I think I seen something. Hold on a second. Let me let me let me cross-reference that real quick and see. But I think he apologized, bro. No lie. I think he apologized or came out with some sort of Hold on. Well, his lack of apology is supposedly what got him canned. Maybe he's apologized since he got fired. He's sorry for getting fired. He's not sorry for what he yeah. said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right about that. You're right about that. You're right about that. Well, yeah. it is what it is at this point. You know what I'm saying? I think she good riddance, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Showtime will find somebody else. So Abner Marrez is doing did a good job on the last uh broadcast. So hey. More power to him, you heard? I want to eat a little crow. Uh, the Instagram sensation apparently has stepped up to the plate. Garcia. Brian Garcia oh, himself. But look, I told you. He's I told agreed you, man. to fight Luke Campbell. Yeah, you know, in principle. I they, they got yeah. the first bid delay. They got, they got the date seven too. days to get it done. They and they narrow days. and they narrowing down the date. They narrowing down the date. They talking about it's gonna be in November. I told you the boy wanna be great, man. And this is gonna be his showcase fight. To be honest with you, I think it's gonna be a situation where a lot of people gonna count Garcia out. Campbell gonna come in there doing what he do. But I believe, man, shit. I think Garcia gonna stand up. And he really, really pushing for certain fights, man. But he wanna be compensated. I don't. I'm not mad at him for that. And a lot of a lot of people is getting on it because you know. They feel as though he want more than what he deserve. But, I mean, shit, he's stepping up right now. And it's not just in principle. They pretty much already have a date going on. It's, they floating around November. So it's going to be a situation where this going to be a showcase fight for him. I think, man, I think Garcia, like... A showcase? Nigga, this is a I, step up. It's a step up, but it's going to be a showcase, though. It's going to be a, a... To me, it's going to be a mix of both. And I'm going to say this, and the reason why. It's going to be a showcase because I believe he got the skills. I believe he's faster. I believe he got the IQ to shine on a, a, a fighter like Campbell. And I also know Campbell is, <clears throat> you know, he's been in the game for a while. He a vet. So I think he's going to bring something to the table that Garcia never seen before. But I think this is going to be a show. This is going to be his time to showcase his skills and show what he really could do in a step up fight. You know what I'm I'll saying? Tell you what, man. Hey, so if it takes place, I'll be ecstatic. Uh, I would hope that Garcia right. will win. So Devin Haney can be the first one to chop that boy up. Uh, uh, as we know, know the winner know of this, the winner of this proposed fight, uh, Campbell or Garcia, would fight would have to face Devin Haney. 
prefer WBC I mean, order? I mean, I like Devin Haney though. I think Devin Haney is a it's a young, bright star coming up. You know what I'm saying? But I think Devin Haney need to get in there with a little bit of talent, such as somebody like him. You know what I'm saying? You know, somebody that could show us what he can do with that level of resistance. You dig what I'm saying? But but see that 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 fight. I have a problem with that fight. I don't. I won't have a problem with that fight after Garcia gets past the Campbell, because then mm-hmm. we'll know that Devin Haney's actually getting in there with somebody that that's got the skills. Because right now, Ryan Garcia, he works out real good. You know what I'm saying? That shit Man. looks good. His hand, hands are real fast. You know, we gotta <laughs> see. Hey, boys, don't hit back, man. Bruce Lee said it best, buddy. Yeah, I feel you, though, so, man. But it it just seemed to me like. I just seem to me he damned if he do, damned if he don't sometimes, man. And I just feel like as soon as he beat the brakes off Campbell, somebody going to you, – you going to have an excuse or no. somebody going to have an excuse. No, or you, will, will you give him credit for this domination, for this – for this, him for this for sure I'll say whole he's better than I thought he was. Domination job that he yeah. about to pull off on Campbell. If he beats Luke Campbell, he's definitely better than I thought he was. That's what I'm saying, man. So that's what I'm saying. You know? So once he do so, that and he move on to Haney – I think it's going to be a, a situation where it'll be a big fight. It'll be the, one of the biggest fights in the sport right now. But you know what it is, though? It's not that I doubt his actual skill. I doubt the ticket. The want to. That's what I doubt. Ah, now, man. Nah, he wants hope, to. He wants to. Hope, hopefully, we'll see him get in there and handle business. Because if he does, man, I mean, he's a, he's a, huge, he's a huge star. Huge yeah. star. It's good for the sport of boxing to have a guy like that. And mm-hmm. Hopefully he can prove me wrong. If he proves me wrong, I have no problem coming on here just like I did today and telling you I was wrong, man. So well, uh, shit. well we gonna have that shot. We're gonna we're we gonna see. I'm gonna hold you to that shit, man, because we're gonna see come November, if not before, but come November, man. If they get in there and, and Garcia do his thing, shit, we're gonna see exactly what's happening. No doubt about it, man. Confirmed Fox pay-per-view, November 21st. No sight yet. But we got Errol the True Spence in a surprising move to me, man. He's coming right out of the gate off of a horrific accident fighting Danny Garcia. DSG, man. That's a big step up, bro. That's a big, that's a big step. That's a big step oh, up. Uh, no, it's not hold a up. Step up. Let me let me let me not say We've that. Let me hold him. Up. Let me yeah, not yeah, say yeah. that. Let me let me walk it back. I'm not saying that it's a step up in talent. I'm saying that is a big step away from after coming from that accident he had and jumping in there again with right. that kind of talent. Because I honestly thought that Spence, and I would have, and, and I'm not like some of them other boxing fans, man. I'm hardcore, but I'm also, I also understand the business of boxing, right? I thought this hey, boy B, was going to jump hey, in there B, with somebody. I'm an advocate for a Spence tune-up. You know yes. what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm a yeah, big bro. advocate for a Spence tune-up. Uh, you know, he's but got DSG. a knock- I would like to see him in with somebody where he can knock any rust off he may have, or we could see if there's any lingering effects like, you know, punch resistance and whatnot. I'm an mm-hmm. advocate for a, 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 a tune-up, but this move by him is to show supreme confidence. Yeah, it's, this ain't no tune-up, that, bro. It's that bravado that you that you want out of a, out of a guy, man. He's showing that he is one of them guys. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? He's one of them guys. Like he got championship heart. He got championship heart, bro. And I've been saying that from the gate. I remember when we used to be back in the day, man, when we used to be chopping it up by the in the boxing groups and shit. And I remember, bro, everybody used to say, man, Spence ain't shit, man. Spence ain't gonna be there. Spence not gonna be that. Bro, oh Spence don't have no heart to do this and pull this off, bro. The boy got heart. He got a dog in him, bro. Nobody can't take away from him. We seen it in the Porter fight. We seen it in the Kell Brook fight, to be honest, which is the boy was over there on foreign soil and went and did what he was supposed to do. And for him to not take a tuna fight and run right back into the doghouse, bro, you can't take that away from him, man. You can't take, you can't question his heart, his dog, all his championship metal inside, bro. The boy a dog, hey, he man, a dog you with can't, it. man. But if my money was behind him, that boy would be fighting, uh, that boy would be fighting Rod Salker <laughs> on, on November hey. 21st. Hey, and, uh, I but you know, oh, I hey, but look though, hey, I would have went pull out. I would have been for me though to complain. I'm not gonna complain about a matchup with two top names in the sport. Nah. Because, but we will, we definitely will see if the if them new teeth gonna hold up. I know, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. But look though, 
I would have told scared, that nigga man, to go if fight. If Danny Garcia catch you with one of them, one of them ass, ass, flow them no look hooks, out of there. Them no look hooks. Ugh. Bro, there's no I look hook. Boy, that boy, that boy, the Magic Johnson of boxing, man. Fight Andre oh Berto, bro. They should have went got Andre Berto and huh? say, look, man, they sh he sh they, they should have went get Andre Berto and let Spence beat on him for about 10 rounds. You dig what I'm saying? Man, and then do fight DSG. Don't do the boy don't Berto do like that. Oh, I got to, man. I got to, man. That boy's a walking, talking, punching bag with eyeballs. You understand oh, what I'm no, saying? Man. Hey, and you Berto know it as well us, as I know. Berto gave us some great fights, man. He gave us some, he gave us fight, some hellacious. Hey, that fight with Victor Ortiz, man, that was... Ooh. Bro, he gave us a couple. He gave us a couple witnessing him getting his ass beat. You understand what I'm saying? That's lie. what I he thought, gave. I thought I thought that guy was gonna be great, man. I really did. Man, that boy, I knew. Bro, I remember watching that boy on HBO, man. I'm not saying I'm not. I don't want to ever talk about a fighter and say you know what I'm saying they cowards, they pussy, they this that. I never want to be that guy, bro. I don't want to be that guy. You did, but I am gonna say this. When Andre Berto started really getting out that partying and bullshitting and, and, and doing all of the shit that he knew he wasn't supposed to be doing as an athlete, bro. <clears throat> Bronering. That's when he, that, yeah, Bronering, if you know what I'm saying. That's when he started taking them losses, bro. He started having injuries out the wazoo, man. You know, he couldn't perform the way he was supposed to. He didn't have the gas tank he had early in his career. That's why he let the likes of Guerrero beat him down. He just didn't beat him up. He beat him up and down. You dig what I'm saying? Then you let somebody like Victor Ortiz get in that man. I'm talking about and wash you, bro. You understand what I'm saying? This is somebody who quit a few fights before and was like, man, I, I'm done. I'm cool. And you let this guy get basically get his highest payday off of your back. Because if you think about it, once uh, Victor Ortiz beat him the way he beat him, he went on to bigger and better things. Hey, you man, see what I'm saying? Look, Which was flawed, look, but man. still. Hey. I'm going to tell you this. He might have lost, but that shit was exciting. It was exciting, though. It was good hey, for the sport. It was good for the sport. Let me get, hey, the boy might be the black, maybe he's the black Oscar De La Hoya. He just don't win a big fight, man. Mm, can't say Oscar that, man. Oscar didn't win him. Oscar didn't win no say, big fights. You know fight. what I'm saying? Oscar didn't win no big fights. And you know what else, though? Andre Berto only had two of them, and it wasn't even nowhere near the people that beat um, yeah, Oscar. Hey, but so, hey, look. We should have supported that boy more, man. He entertained us. We should have gave him the Arturo Gotti treatment. Why can't a an Italian guy, get, it's cool for them to get beat up, be a knockdown drag out wars. They can continue to get paydays. A black guy loses, man, and we just throw him away. What's up with that? Man, I don't know, man. I just think that's just the nature of the game, bro. I think black fighters, we just, man, we market ourselves a little bit different, bro. And I think it is a high standard to a degree. I don't give, I'm not going to lie to you. Because we make the most money if we become the bad, by, the bad guy, you know, the heel, the villain, and all that shit. So I, I feel like you, you got a point. But is, and then our audience, you know, we don't have that much of an audience. You know what I'm saying? We depend on that crossover, right? So he was never going to get that, mm -hmm. that Arturo Gaddy treatment, bro. The audience just not there to see somebody like that, bro. We we want to see Flash, man. You know what I'm saying? We want to see Flash. We want to see all of the other shit Dominant. outside of... Yeah, bro. We don't want to see... Bro, we do not want to see walking, talking, punching bags stop, with eyeballs. Stop, stop, stop. It's stop, not stop, happening, bro. It's not, look, hey, it's not I happening. enjoy it. Look, man. Birdo is one of, my, one of my guys. I love to watch the guy fight. Win, lose, or draw, he's going to give it all he's got. You know what I'm saying? Maybe the party took took his level of all he's got down, but he is never going to shy away from a fight, and he's going he's gonna to bring it, man. Um, but we got off on a tangent there, man. That that happens with us. <laughs> we, we, yeah. we do that often, you know what I'm saying? We get in the conversation, and, and the shit, there's no telling where it's going to lead. But Spence Garcia, man. That fight being made, a lot of people are wondering, now oh, what about Terrence Crawford, man? In in my view, my my opinion now, I'm glad that this fight is not Terrence Crawford for not only for Spence, but for Crawford's sake. Because mm -hmm. 
if you're Terrence Crawford, at that point, if you fight and Errol Spence coming off of this accident, you're kind of in a no-win situation. True. If you True. beat him, if you beat him, it's always the questions about, well, was he even the same after the accident? You know, what is that? If you lose, then you lost. You know what I'm saying? You, just, you, mm -hmm. you know, so I'm good with that not happening, but Terrence Crawford, he needs a dance partner. Bob's talking about Pacquiao. Hmm. Hmm. Um, also, Pacquiao won't fight him. Pacquiao won't fight him. Discussions are open, opening up with Kell Brooks camp. Yeah, bro, but if that, that, if that, to me, Kell, Kell put together a fight before, before Pacquiao. Pacquiao had a shot so many times, bro, and them boys ran from the hills every time Crawford went, come knocking on the door. And that's, and this is all documented. This ain't my opinion, right? Yeah. So I think I mean, Kell fight him before Pacquiao. Yeah, we kind of know Pacquiao is, is not interested in Crawford. That's probably that's one reason he left top rank to come yeah. to PBC. But Kell Brook fight to me is a must make for Terrence Crawford. He's, he needs to do he needs well, to get Bob Arum to do everything he can to make that fight. That's a that's a for sure resume builder at one forty seven for him. Keep, but even keep but even at one forty seven. But even if he can't make the uh, Kell Brook fight, I'll take the Sean Porter fight that they've been throwing around, too. I think that'd be a good matchup, too. You know what I'm saying? I'll take Sean that. Sean Porter seems like he wants us to be friends. Yeah, but she, Crawford basically said, man, if, if he if he want to fight, he can, he'll put it together. They'll fight. Yeah, Crawford yeah. did, but Sean yeah. Porter still Porter, like, you know. Yeah, but I think they, they floated his name out there. After, I think of the money right. I think if the I think if the money right and the opportunity to stay there for a little while longer and Porter and nothing comes on Porter plate from now in, until like the end of the year, I think they can put it together. I think they'll put it together. Might make and take it. Oh yeah, for oh. sure. Oh, for sure, for sure. Because that's one thing about that's one thing about his daddy, bro. His daddy ain't ain't, ain't passing up opportunities, bro. Like nah, he no, he, he going. Oh yeah, he, he going. Man, he got to. If he it could be made, suits, he got to keep them shoes fly. Man, you know if he could be and them hats, keep that, that, that caddy fresh. I'm telling you, man, they had them hats. Young tender brownies. Bro, if he if, if it's a deal to be made, if it's a deal to be made, they gonna make it. You did. But what you think about uh Brona, Brona uh and 135 though? Because like man, when I first oh. seen it, check me out, right? Check me no, out. When oh, I first seen wait a minute, it, man. Wait a minute, man. I thought we was doing a boxing show. <laughs> Bro, I'm telling you, dog. about Adrian Brona. Bro, AB say that he willing to go uh, down to 135 and nobody will beat him at 135. That's what he said, man. That's what the man said, man. You dig what I'm saying? Bro, bro, so I don't know, bro. Man. Adrian, <laughs> Adrian Jerome Broner. That's what he hasn't said. He had a win since 2017, man. Why bro. are we talking about Adrian Jerome Broner, man? Bro, at the end of the day, bro, the athletic bastard said that he'll go to 135. <laughs> <laughs> and can't nobody beat him. You did. Hey, has he come? Has he come off his ten million dollar demand? No. He was talking about that too. He was basically saying nobody called, nobody hit him up. You know what I'm saying? Everybody <laughs> in the wind. So <laughs> ten million. Something. That should tell you something, though, bro. But like he <laughs> said, bro, you know, he's financially fine. You know what I'm saying? So I know. <laughs> I just feel look, like I look, <laughs> look man. Look, man. He says this he's just, financially this fine. Is just, this is just fueling the focused Broner crowd. You know what bro, I'm saying? The boy the say, man the boy was say. missing weight. The man was missing weight at 135 when he was champ at 135. Bro, I done seen him miss weight a couple times uh, north of 140, 147. So I mean, it's not like it ain't like, bro, he have a history of, you know, doing the right things, bro. So I think, you know, Broner. He won't be serious about it. And if he is serious, it should have shocked me. But all this talk about Haney and Brown at 135, nah, bro. That ain't uh, happening. Especially not if he wants 10 million bucks. Nah, that ain't happening. That ain't happening for sure, for sure. That, that, that fight wouldn't happen until the, the fan restriction is lifted, if it did. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I, just in my heart of hearts, in my same mind and body, <laughs> I cannot mm -hmm. pick a guy that hasn't had a win, the winning taste, since yeah. February of 2017. Yeah, that's a rough pill. That's a, that's, a rough, that's a rough pill to swallow. Not over a young and hungry bro. fighter, man. 
Woo, no. man. I mean, when he sit there and think about it, when you sit there and, and you say it that way and you think about it that way, bro, I mean, that's a hard pill to swallow as a fighter, bro. Like, you ain't had a win since, seven, since what, February 2017? Bro. You ain't had that championship taste, man. Bro, come on, man. Man, we only need to talk about that, man. That boy, shit, he out of there. He out of there. Man, so I was reading up, man, and they said Munguia, you know, he got a side set on uh, Jamal Charlo. You dig what I'm saying? In the Jamal. WBC title. Yeah, Jamal, Jamal Charlo. That's, that's middleweight. Once yeah, w, WBC. WBC. He said he want that strap no matter who got it. Uh, I like Munguia, man. I think, he a, I think he a young, talented fighter. He got a lot of skills. You know, he got the golden boy machine, you know, backing him and whatnot. Bro, mm -hmm. he ain't beating them all. I'm sorry, dog. Look, I, I, you know what? I think 154. He was a monster. He it was a better weight for him. You know, he mm -hmm. was a bigger guy in 154. 160. He's kind of, you know, average size, and he, he don't have his the, the same advantages. So I would have rather saw him against Mel Jamel Charlo at 154. Yeah. I think that would have been a great fight, but. He's already moved up. He fought O'Sullivan in his 160 debut. He looked fairly good. You know what I'm saying? He looked he looked okay to me. But it, you it know was what I'm against, saying? He looked right now. It was against O'Sullivan. I don't O'Sullivan, even think this no. is something to talk about. Yeah, it's gonna take. I, I need to see him two more times at this weight before we can talk about him challenging for a title. You know what I'm saying? But I say, you know, right now the Charlos got 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 some. <laughs> Got some big, big, big meat on their plate. I already they, know. They, they talking about Pauls. They got Rosario and uh, Dervinchenko. Yeah. and But I'm going to yeah. tell you the truth, though, yeah, man. Yeah, that Rosario, Mar 154, man. Jamel, man, that boy is slowly building a heck of a resume. That's what I'm saying. And, but Mel and Maul, man, them boys been putting in work, though. They just never get the credit because they not out there as much. That's it, man. No. Jamel is starting to do what it takes to be legendary. Now Jamal still ain't. What names is on Jamal's resume? Talk Man, to nobody want to. Nobody want to fight Maul. You dig what I'm saying? Nobody want to fight Maul, bro. Like, dog. Maul, Canelo don't want to fight Maul. Canelo don't want to fight Maul. If if Maul call up Andrade, 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 however he prefers to get it to be from now. He gonna answer, baby. Now, yeah, that's true. But right now, bro, them boys want to fight in household on that side. And that's facts. You dig what I'm saying? Andrade, he's a um, he's a name that Canelo been floating around for the last couple months. But now they didn't, they say they narrowed it down to um, Billy Joe Saunders, bro. But I just feel like man, nobody really want to step up and fight Maul. Maul been calling out Triple G. He called out Danny Jacobs. He called out all these dudes, bro. These dudes don't want to get down he with the program. Hey man, did you see that video? Like I saw that video. Man, it looks like. He backpedaled on that Danny Jacobs action. Nah, nah, he ain't, nah, he ain't back down. Nah, it was just a little bit more. It was it was too chaotic in that video. That video showed you right then and there, man. Maul was like, look, he coming down there right now. Let's see what he talking about. And then Danny want to show up with all that old extra shit, which is fine. You dig what I'm saying? But shit, we on the South, man. We don't give a fuck about that shit. You know, Danny, 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 an East Coast yeah. nigga. You feel me? So we, he looking at it like, man, we ain't moving. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it wasn't like he was. He trying to get that. He, it wasn't like he was moving and saying, oh, you know, I don't want that smoke. Nah, Ma was just like, look, we ain't got to be hooping, howling, and doing all that extra shit, talking all loud. He was just like, look, man, I want that smoke. Let's get to it. But yeah, as I we can see. Boy. I seen that, boy. But as we can see, Jacobs didn't want that smoke. You dig what I'm saying? Jacobs, hey, Jacobs had a different kind of smoke in mind. I seen that boy <laughs> on IG with Vanessa Sim and Angela Simmons. That's what I'm saying. So let him do his thing, let him you do whatever, but. Right now, man. Hey, but I really want to see, man. I want to see Jamal be great, bro. But little bro, uh, I don't he know gonna be one of the oldest, but Jamal, I know he had the Maul. he had the lighter weight class. That boy yeah. building the hey, now that he boy is. building a resume out of this world, man. It's more names that too, and on top of that, bro. I mean, a lot of people willing to fight Mel. Mel got a lot of he and he he got a lot of options. Maul, on the other hand, is a lot more hey, political talk, at one sixty. He talked the most shit too. Yeah, I like him. I don't give a fuck, man. I like them boys, man. I think them boys true fighters, bro. I think them boys. I, I think them love boys. Man. I, hey, Hell yeah. I like when he get in his bag and get to talking that shit, boy. Bro, Ooh, bro he be chopping them boys up. 
That's what I'm saying, bro. So that's what that's what man, that's what the sport need right now, though, bro. So man, Mungia can go sit down, man. He ain't he ain't taking shit off Maul. He'll get he'll get the he'll get the WBC strap when Maul moved to 168 or some shit like that, but he ain't taking it off Maul. Mungia just did the customary call out of everybody after that fight. Yeah, he yeah. called out Canelo, yeah. Triple G. Now, I'm going to tell you, that's a fight he, he probably could get. Triple G needs some needs a dance partner right now, bro. He ain't got yeah. nothing going on. Yeah, but I'm so, hearing that he I'm hearing he chasing the strap though or some shit. He chasing some other shit going on. I I forgot what it was I was reading, but I haven't even really looked at him and, and kept up with him too much cuz it's right now it's been kind of slow, but he not even he don't even want to tangle with Canelo right now. He they were supposed to make the Canelo Triple G three, and he put he backed out to go chase some other shit that I think fell through. So I don't know what's going on. But at the end of the day, I wish him all well. But at the end of the day, let me just say this: Mungie ain't taking shit off Ma. And no, that's just where I'm at. I don't think it, hey, no, well, you know, we just got off into some other stuff, man. But as far as Mungie, Jamal Charlo, I got Jamal Charlo all day. Knockout, I mean, second I don't, round. I don't think me. It's, Stop it, second I, round. I think he me. goes. I think I think he's stopping in five. I'll give you that. I I'll take that. Him in five. Long as we can agree on the stoppage, we good. Yeah, buddy, gonna get stopped. He he too aggressive. He gonna get yeah. stopped. All right. So, last I heard, man, Lopez holding out with Llama for some bread. So that fight might be in jeopardy, man. What you think about that? One? Oh man, you 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 need to update your uh, wire, buddy. What happened? Man, they uh they they finalizing the deal. For real? Gonna be on regular ESPN. Loma Chico agreed to give that man 800 k out of his bread to get his payday up to $2 million. Damn. To get, to get to your female uh, payday up to $2 million, man. And shit, they got that thing rolling, brother. They, well, they, they about to get it on. Well, all right, then. Well, look, who you got? Bruh, you don't give a man 800000 if you ain't about to punish him on on national television, Lopez gonna stand up on Loma, man. I believe it. I think I think this is time to shine, bro. Say what? I think I think Lopez is gonna shine on him. I ain't gonna say he gonna beat him and and, and just and dog him, but I don't think it's gonna be one of them them boxing exhibitions that Lomachenko used to. Hey, how much we bet? Mm, shit, we can put a hundred on it. I got a hundred on that boy, on that boy from uh from Eastern. Hey, didn't Paul Imanadi tell you that them Eastern Europeans dominating boxing? No, no, I'm not saying. And he wanted he one of the ones that I was saying that that's dominating, bro. <laughs> but I just feel like I just feel like this didn't is Lopez that boy time. Paul tell you, bro? He did say that, but what I'm saying is, is this: Lopez is gonna dog him. He gonna he gonna be in there. He gonna be in. It's gonna be a dog fight all the way through, bro. I'm telling you, dog. I'm telling you, I got faith in that little young boy, man. That little bro. young boy gonna put in work. Man, look, Lomachenko. In the words of Pauli Malignaggi, man, that's my side piece. Lomachenko gonna treat that boy like a side piece, man. We gonna, he gonna see. Throw that boy away, man. Man, we gonna see, look, man. I don't see you it. You get. And just like I was telling you, Errol Spence's move to come right off of that accident and fight Danny Garcia was just the ultimate fighter's move. Mm -hmm. This right here, man, hey, I'm going to give you a – look, take this 800000 man. I'm going to whoop you, man. Yeah, but – I'm going to school that boy, and it ain't going to be – look, it's not. It's going to be It's going to be along the lines of Mayweather got it. Oh, no, bro. No way in the world, dog. Dog, he gave him that eight hundred thousand dollars, man, to get shined on, to get that boy on TV thinking man, that he that about to do him. That boy gonna punish. He gonna punish that boy like like Mayweather punished guy in front of all no. his fans in in Atlantic City, man. Nah, man, Lopez gonna give him too much resistance. He gonna give him too much resistance. That boy, that little young boy, hit hard, man. He fast and he's smart too. I'm not saying that he got. Loma hey, IQ. You know what I'm gonna do? You know, you, you know what I'm gonna do though. You know, when we get off here, I'm gonna go dig up 
commentary from before the Mayweather Gotti fight. They were saying that same thing about that. We gonna see. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't think, bro. I'm telling y'all, man. People. I don't know why people. I don't know why people, bro. Why everybody shitting on that boy T T or Fimo, man? I'm not shitting on him. He's just not right. on the level. He's not on the level of 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 Vasil Lomachenko, bro. He got that pop though. He got that pop that Loma ain't yeah. never faced in us in professional. Being a professional, he got enough pop right now, bro. That's gonna put him on his ass. Hey, Amen. Lomachenko you, you, ain't never really on, had that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You didn't see that Nicholas Walters was on before he got in the ring with Lomachenko? Yeah, bro, but Nicholas Walters is not huh? Teofimo Lopez, bro. Teofimo had pop. But he ain't got he ain't have speed though. Like he ain't had the IQ or speed to put it where it needed to be. Man, Teofimo, I'm gonna tell you, man, these young boys, they they be listening to too much. I don't know if all these guys listen to Rod Wade, but they too emotional for me. Him, this Ryan Garcia cat, that's why I don't feel him. Uh, Teofimo, one time, he got on the fight. Uh, what that show is with uh, with Max Kellerman had, he was on there whining about his family. Oh, they don't like my girlfriend. Hey, man, man, I can't trust a dude like that in the ring. Nah, bro. Uh, I'm going he, on the Chinko. He was explaining oh, okay. how he was explaining though. He was explaining his uh his poor performance in the fight before before that, right? That's all you making excuses. Nah, it wasn't excuses, but he was going through a lot of shit though at the time. So at the end of the day, I feel him. But when he come down to Lomo, I think he got Loma number. Nigga, what? Give me bro, bring out the violins, <laughs> man. I think that they, I think he got his number though, bro. So what you think about? So we got we got Canelo, we got Canelo in the zone. They beefing, you know. Like we said earlier, they refusing fights by Canelo. He can't fight tomato cans at this point to fulfill that like, six fight or whatever, however many fight it was contract. And uh, he basically going through it, saying that they need to hold up the deal of the contract. I stand with Canelo. Yeah, I do too. You know what I'm saying? They need to hold up to that. They need to hold hey, up to that, man. You come in the game, you come in the game, big nuts, throwing dollars around, you know what I'm saying? You want to do what it takes to play with the big boys. I mean, $350 million, man. 300, I think it was 350 or 365. It was something like that, that they gave Canelo. Man, that was big dog shit, bro. You know what I'm well, saying? But but and and it, and it's not like Canelo asking for back end money. He just asking for nah. his guarantee. He asking for his guarantee, and he also, but he not putting up the 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 names that they want, bro. See, they want they want the names right about now. You know what I'm saying? Because from what I was reading, they was he was. I'm gonna tell you this. No, I'm thinking they bringing the names, but still want him to drop his price. That's how I interpret. It. No, no, they you know saying, saying yeah, they yeah, want yeah, him to right, fight these right. names. But but they still trying to drop his price, and oh yeah, ain't gonna fly. Yeah, they still trying to lowball him and want him to fight harder comp uh competition. So yeah, nah. and the name, nah, it ain't gonna work. It ain't gonna work. Nah, it ain't, man. We got that's a quick conversation. That's an opening shit case, Johnson. Exactly. I was thinking about it too. I just wanted to get your opinion about it. Now we got Tyson and Jones. <clears throat> it got postponed right to November twenty eighth. Ticket price gonna be what pay per view price. It's gonna be fifty dollars, you know. I remember we touched on that last show, uh, and Badu Jack making a return. At least for me, I feel a little bit more comfortable paying the fifty dollars now because I think we see they adding a little bit more, you know, real fights to the situation. Opposed Badu, oh, they, Badu they coming out. They trying to put all that together. They putting all that on the same card. Yeah, that's the undercard. You got a uh, you got Badu Jack. You got Badu Jack uh, coming back in a return. He fighting. Um, he, who we gonna fight? We know. Do we know? Yeah, I seen him. I seen him on a. Uh, hold on a second. Cause look, you know my thoughts on this Tyson Roy Jones shit. I don't care. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I yeah. don't care. I'm not trying to see niggas try to channel the past and shit. I'm not into that, man. Come on, man. Give me new blood. I'm in the new blood. You know, I'm ready to be pleasantly surprised by Ryan Garcia or Teofimo Lopez, man. Show me, prove me wrong. I It's nothing I would rather be than wrong about a young fighter that I think is not as good as they build him up to be. I feel you on that one. I but feel you on that one, bro. Tyson and Roy Jones, man, they can postpone that to 
my funeral. <laughs> right now he fighting uh he fighting Blake. So I just feel like they they just rounding out the card. Yeah, you know what I'm I like I, I like Badu Jack, man. He always like Berto, man, that guy puts on a fight every time. He always mm -hmm. in a barn burner. You know, I yeah. respect him. I love to see him fight. He is actually, out of Mayweather promotions, the guys they've signed, man, he's been, been one of the success stories. Yeah. I'll say that. Yeah, I, I can agree saying? with that. I can agree with that. But I just want to bring really, that up. He had a solid career. Yeah. I just want to bring that up because, you know, just in case some of the fans didn't know, that it is going to be mm -hmm. some real fights on that card. It's just not going to be a circus like everybody's saying. Um, mm. You know, it's going to be it's going to be a pretty decent card in terms of putting some real fights on the card. So uh, it's going to be pretty cool. They might trick me into watching that thing by default. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's still some circus acts on that. You know what I'm saying? You got the the uh, <clears throat> Nate Robinson fight, a couple other fights, but for the most part, I mean, it'll be probably worth fifty dollars. So I'm gonna go ahead and just they already got my money. So we good on okay. that. All right. Yeah. Dana White was talking about Dana White was talking about this uh Mayweather, this Mayweather UFC collab that still could be in the works. I don't know, man. I don't I'm I hate the way they keep teasing I mean, the shit, what bro. What do you mean by Mayweather UFC collab? I don't know, man. I've been looking in bro, I've been looking into it like cross promotions or some shit like that. So I've been waiting to see what's boxing, going on. Like boxing and MMA cars or something? Nah, nah, I don't think it'll be that. I think it'll be more of a branding thing. You dig what I'm saying? I don't think it'll be you no know, actual events. I think it'll be more of a branding situation with Mayweather promotions, probably promoting, pumping some UFC shit, and then UFC pumping some Mayweather promotion stuff. That's what I'm thinking. But they, he was teasing it a little bit, saying that it's still in the works. They still having talks about certain events and certain things going on. At first, I immediately jumped to, to conclusions, you know what I'm saying? Oh, we're about to see uh, Mayweather McGregor, too, but nah, he shut, he shut them rumors down. So I don't know, man. I just want to bring it up because uh, they've been teasing it for a while, man. And, and it's, I, hate when, I hate when people tease the shit and don't really just break down and just say what they're going to do or whatever. But yeah. it just is what it is. I know we got Frampton and we got Conlon fighting this Saturday on ESPN's Top Rank. Saturday will be night for, uh, yeah. for, for, for bubble boxing. Um, yeah. Frampton and Conlon are both fighting. They're fighting separate opponents, but it's supposed to kind of be like a tease for a matchup between those two down the road. Um, you know, they, it should be two. It's two. This is two true showcase fights. We should mm -hmm. see. Hopefully, we see two good performances, and hopefully, they – iron it out, and they end up meeting because that's what it's all about. And um, if I know Bob Arum, he's not putting this together if they're not going to fight. Exactly. Exactly. So I think it's going to be a good show. I think it's going to be a good card. Um, it's going it's rounding out to be pretty decent, so we'll see how that play out. And like we touched on the Benavidez and Angulo show on Showtime PBC. Same night. Look, man. Look, man. Hey. I was, uh, when I first heard the fight, I'm like, Alfredo and Gulo? You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking about the, <laughs> the kid yeah, yeah. that had the fight with Kirkland, with James Kirkland, the big classy fight. And, yeah. But it's like, Alexis, Alexis uh, yeah. and Gulo. And, and I, I, I think I, his I record looked, like 21, man, and, 21 and 1 or something, 26 and 1 or 26, something. 26, no, 26 yeah. and 1. He's yeah. 26 and 1. His one loss was Gilberto Ramirez. Oh, and he had, he he had some bright spots in that fight, man. He 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 actually looked okay. I I wa went back and watched the film. You know what I'm saying? He looked alright. He 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 actually landed some good shots on mm -hmm. Ramirez. So it's not a walk in the park for Benavidez by any means. Uh, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? In and Gulo's last fight, he got an upset win over Anthony Sims Jr. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm I'm so, go with I'm gonna go with Benavidez by by bloody murder. Um, look, and hopefully it'll look. set up the fight that I want to see, which is Benavidez and Killer Plant. You know, Killer Plant. I mean, Benavidez went off on Killer Plant early in the week. 
you know, he was saying some crazy shit about him, you know, whatever. But um, did he talk about his fake story? I believe I didn't listen to the whole thing, man. I just I just kind of touched on it because I was on a move, but uh, it was kind of the typical that's, shit, though. Because if I was a fighter, that's what I was talking. About. Yeah, and it was kind of the typical shit too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, you know, shit talking. They've been going into it, getting into it, back and forth, but. I don't know, man. I just I, I wanna I wanna see that fight, and hopefully this weekend get us closer to it. Hey, Benavidez, man, this is second reign as WBC champion because we as we know, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. He had the suspension, you know. He he's one of the coke boys. Oh yeah. Know? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hey, he, 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 he been, but he was partying <laughs> a little bit too much. He, he, you know, wide yeah. open, but hey. I, the, the boy's got some serious skills, and I love to see him do his thing, and I can't wait for Saturday night. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hopefully, like I said, it's going to get us closer to the Benavidez and Keller planet. Pretty much everybody want to see, bro. All right. Yeah. Now we about to go on, Now we about to go into the UFC, man. You know, uh, you know, this kind of my wheelhouse, too. You feel me? I, I like sure. MMA my shit. Um, Dana White, he picked all five winners for uh, week two. Or the contender series, you did so big ups to them boys. Um, you know, it was some good fights going on. Uh, UFC four releases today, you did on all platforms. Yep, Xbox, PlayStation, all that. Um, Bro, hey, we gotta hurry up, man, and wrap this up. I gotta make it because you know, during the yeah. quarantine, Walmart closed early. I gotta get over there, Jack. Man, I already uh got it, I already downloaded it. Uh, man, you didn't. Bro, we t- we text all day today. You didn't bro, tell me. I I thought I did, bro. I ain't lying. I thought I did, bro. I thought I told you. I thought I told you, bro. But shit, my bad. But look, it came out today. It's gonna go down. You did. Shit, we need to hop online. And I'm putting up right now. I'm throwing. I'm throwing a challenge out there right now. Anybody who want it, y'all got my Instagram. Y'all know how to find me on Facebook. You know how to find me on Twitter. Anybody who want to get it, man, I'm putting up fifty dollars for the winner. You dig what I'm saying? For everybody who want to come and get this work. And that go for Fight Night Champion 2 on Xbox on Xbox One because this back was compatible. Shit, anybody could get it. You feel me? Uh, well, I, I, let me add in. If anybody want to see me on MLB The Show 20, <laughs> yeah, Diamond Dynasty. That's what I'm saying. Um, yeah, I I'll just be your like, Huckleberry in the world yeah. of Rod Jones Jr. Uh, I'll be your Huckleberry. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. Look, so... I'm throwing, I'm just throwing it out there, man. Shit, just in case y'all want to get down and get to it. Uh, Masvidal won another title shot. Let's go with that one, right? Um, yeah. He won another title shot. He feel as though he did some damage to the champ. Broke his nose and whatnot. He did? All that. Yeah, I, you know what I'm saying? So, he, well, he, he is out with a broken nose. So, I guess we'll just see, you know, we'll just equate that to hey, your boy. Baby, it's a fight. It's a, it's a fight, man. Something going to happen. You know what I'm saying? But you lost. Hey, somebody go get clipped. Look, you lost. You lost. Hey, if, if Broner, if Broner didn't give me nothing else, that nigga gave me some classic post fight clip. You lost. Come on. Yeah, but you hey, lost. Hey. Come on. Leon Edwards, man, he put him on notice today, though. Well, not to, not today. I seen I seen part of it today, but I seen it when it happened too. You know, he basically just said, you know, uh, Leon Edwards is the number one contender. He the next one up to fight. Yes. me, and he basically said, "Man, shit, if you want to fight, if you if you feel as though you want to <clears throat> you want a title shot, then shit, let me and you get it on." So that's right in limbo right now. So we'll just see how it go. Uh, mm-hmm. Sean O'Malley, uh, he the next one up, man. That's a new little young fighter that's coming up. What way he at? Oh shit, that he bantam weight. He bantam weight. He uh. Oh, he one of them little guys. Yeah, but he fighting on is a he, he fighting flying on, off the cage and shit. Man, everybody gonna get to see. This is a fighter that everybody needs to watch this weekend at UFC five. I mean two fifty two. This is a fighter that everybody needs to pay attention to. He fighting this weekend? Yeah, he fighting this weekend. He he got a fight coming up this weekend on pay per view. Hey man, dog. The, he, look. How the hell we gonna balance all this, man? We got Frampton and, and, and my boy. We got. We got Benavidez, then we got UFC. What am I? Man, I'm gonna have to record something. Man, look, it's a, it's a way we can pull it all off. I got five screens in here. I can figure it out. 
I know I'm watching everything. You got a goddamn uh, uh, sports bar in your crib. Yeah, I got to figure it out, though. I'm going to figure it all out. But his name, you know, it's the Sugar Show. The little dude, man, he put in work, man. He, 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 he really put in work, bro. I'm gonna, check, I'm gonna check the man out. You you making star. him sound you making him sound like an MMA Prince Nassim my man. Oh yeah, yeah. He 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 can really be he can really be the next Conor McGregor when it comes down to star power, bro. He really got it mm. like that. Yeah, he he really got it like that. Um, next up, man, we got <clears throat> Michael Chandler. He a free agent. He was fighting for Bellator. I think his contract up or something like that. He might be making a. Uh, it might be possible he come over to the UFC. I seen a little bit of Michael Chandler, man. Yeah, kind of rangy, he, rangy kid. No, <clears throat> yeah, that, but he kind of he fight kind of compact, and also, and also too, I think he beat uh, Henderson. So, you know, Henderson was the, yeah was the one <clears throat> that's in that highlight reel for getting his head slapped off by old boy uh, Pettis running off the cage. So yeah, he beat him. So he yeah. might be coming to the UFC. We got Kobe Covington and Tyrone Woodley. Uh, just supposed to be happening sometime in September. September 19th, they floating around. Kobe Covington was the one that make America great. You know what I'm saying? He fought Usman, got dominated. You know, he a, he so a Trump why guy. Is he why is he up for another shot? Well, because <clears throat> for one, he, for one, he sell pay-per-views. For two, yeah. for two, he in, he interesting guy and he could fight, you know? And Tyrone, Tyrone Woodley was a guy that he was supposed to fight when he was the champ. But mm -hmm. Tyron Woodley was hurt or something like that. So he ended up moving, Kobe Covington ended up moving on to the next guy who was the champ, which was Usman. So that would be a good fight. And uh, I'm thinking that would be a situation where they could put up some good numbers with that pay-per-view because I already well, know it's bad. You know who I got. Oh, yeah. You me know too. who I'm picking. Yeah, me yeah. too. And no Houston Zone. And I got to go. Let's close it out with this, man. Houston Zone, Derek Lewis. Congratulations, bro. Uh, your second round KO. Last weekend, man, put you with the most the KOs, most in, most in UFC history. You hear me? So I feel like, I feel like, bro, the the guy is finally coming into where he need to be. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, he got right up there at top, at top you know, with uh, the top some of the top guys, but he was getting closed out. He was having some situations going on. I think with some training and some stuff. Uh, -huh. uh from what I was reading, I'm not sure because I'm not in his camp, but uh. It looked like to me, from what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing, that he finally putting it all together, and I think he might have a run for the heavyweight title, bro. I believe. Hey, I hope so, bro. Believe. Hey, he if if the boy from H Town, man, the guy from H Town, if he do that and I, and outside is open, that's that'll be my first UFC event. Me and you yeah. will go check that out. Man, I'm in it. I'm in there. And she speaking of UFC events, man. You know we got UFC 252. We already talked about that last week, but we got to do it because right now, right now, man, you know, shit, this day, everybody talking about your boy Daniel, this might be his last fight. So hopefully, man, he can pull it off. Great. Good yeah, news yeah. For me. Hopefully he can pull oh, it off, man. And, and send and do that man fight. off crying. Send him off crying like he can, like he was before. Nah, bro. Nah, bro. It ain't happening. It ain't happening, bro. I think he's gonna win the title. I think I think what'll happen is, bro, he end up winning the title. He'll stick around for a little while, man. Cause he need a big payday. That Brock Lesnar payday didn't come through for him. So man, the man need to, it's time to ride off into the sunset, man. Go on. Enjoy your life. Enjoy your wife. Nah, Please. man. Nah, man. But this weekend, man, we got like I said, UFC 252. We got some good events. We got MMA events. We got boxing events this weekend. Man, y'all just stay engaged. Stay tuned. Uh, in the last episode, I said we was going to be dropping on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I think. But we're going to go ahead and move it to Tuesdays and Fridays. And uh, we're going to shoot for noon every week, every uh, release day. Yeah, because Fridays, you, you know, Fridays... Tuesdays, we can give you the recap of, of weekend's events. Fridays, we can give you the forecast for whatever's coming up. You know what I'm saying? I think that's that's pretty that's pretty dope. Shit, well, that sounds like a plan then, man. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to close it out. All right, stay tuned. Next week, Tuesday at noon for episode three. You can find this episode and episode one on Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube. Um... And what Facebook. else we got? Oh, and Facebook. And uh, 
Man, y'all engage with oh, us, man. Let us know. The LockerRoom.com page. Yeah, LockerRoom.com page. Uh, and a YouTube page, too. So, man, y'all just engage with us and let us know what y'all think. Um, we about to be picked up by a couple of the big outlets, and we'll figure it out. Give us feedback, man. You, I know you disagree with me, man. Let me know. That's it, man. So we out, man. Y'all be good. Peace.